In terms of the remote setting, we've already been uh, running our personal tutorials and various seminars and um, activities remotely. I certainly think that I've had good interactions with my students since we've been locked down and hopefully that will continue and improve as we as we start to think about the structure of our timetable next for next academic year. We did have quite a lot of experience. We we built we we had built an ed tech team. We we have experience of, of remote platforms, Coursera, edX. We are running remote remote activities, remote courses, remote learning very, very actively. So so I think all of that preparation we did, and in fact the teaching and learning strategy which which was implemented has actually put us in a very good position. I agree. So we have um, there is a digital strategy as part of the learning and teaching strategy. So we'd be moving much more to thinking about how we might use how how we might teach remotely. But I think further than that, um, our ed tech teams have really been strengthened, and that means that we've already started to think how we can embed those technologies into our teaching, whether it's on campus or whether it's remotely. So I think that it's I think that we have to move away from thinking about this remote or on campus setting and think more about how are our students actually engaging with the material? How are they actually going to learn? How are they going to learn from each other and from us in the less traditional um, in, in less traditional ways? So one natural question is that and in fact, I'm sure students and staff have have this as indeed we all do is how are we going to manage labs, the physical hands on the activity of standing at the lab bench? How are we going to manage that with social distancing? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to think about uh, how we manage the labs socially distanced, but also how we provide remote alternatives to those labs. In fact, we have, we've already been gathering some experience of that this term with the lab work that's already having to be moved um, to a remote setting. So, for example, in physics, they have quite a long lab based project and they've actually created groups remotely and students are working not only on theoretical projects, but also projects that, that involve um, doing things like blowing across bottles and looking at how air pressure works in terms of making musical instruments and how the shape dictates things. And that's being done across the world. And I think that so, so we're able to get that, that group work along with actual laboratory work, even if it's being done remotely. For next year, we have some really imaginative ideas. So we're looking at things like lab in a box, where we actually post a box of the laboratory equipment to people's homes. So they're able to complete the lab based work in their own homes with the social distancing. If we have some students that are working remotely, we're already looking at buying cameras. So those students that are socially distanced in the labs will be filming their experiments. They'll be working together potentially at the same time on on a lab based experiment. So I think that there are lots of opportunities to also increase the learning of the students during this during this in this remote setting. We've already been mapping some of our field trips to a remote setting. So, and this was done in a, in by some really imaginative staff that suddenly found that all of their students were scattered all over the world. One of the projects that has been running in life sciences has been recording the dawn chorus. So they're recording bird songs and they're using that data to 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 look at the biodiversity. So I think that there are some really exciting things that you can still do even when they're remote. So one of the most important things about going to university is the interaction between students and staff, whether it's seminars, personal tutorials. Now those obviously, or not I say obviously, but they but they often require you know physical presence next to each other, close to each other. How, how, how's that going to take place under the multi-mode system that we that we envisage? So under the kind of multi-mode setting, we'll obviously we are still hoping to have some on-campus activity. I actually think this gives us a, an amazing opportunity to increase those interactions because at the moment, a lot of the contact time for students um, on campus has been sitting in a lecture theatre just watching someone at the front deliver information. Uh, not universally, because I know many of our departments are doing some amazing active learning activities already. But nonetheless, I think this gives us opportunities to do much more of that. I think it gives us opportunities to run 
smaller group seminars, for example, because the lectures will be moving to a remote setting. And it means that all of that contact time can really be about those interactions. Of course, some of them will be remote, but we're hoping that there will certainly be some of that activity going on on campus. I think that we have some amazingly imaginative staff. And I think that, again, is one of the great things about working at Imperial, because if you're working with the best academics and the best students, then I think that we are going to find the best solutions to, the, to these problems. When I think back to my undergraduate days, the student experience was incredibly important. The actual experience of being an undergraduate, being in London, surrounded by other students, networking with them, um, yeah, I mean, just enjoying their company, enjoying the clubs and societies and all the other things that Imperial has to offer. Now, how's, how's this multi-mode, some remote, some in-person going to marry with the actual student experience of coming to London to be a student? I think that's a very good question. I think it's one that we need to put a lot of thought into. So we have um, we've have set up a range of groups looking at various activities, not just the academic side of things. And we have a meeting every week dedicated to the student experience. And that's actually co-chaired by a student. And it's covering everything from how they're going to actually build cohorts to how they're going to engage with the clubs and societies, how it's going to work in halls, how it will work with the library, how will the student support services work, and how we can think about that how that would work in this multi-mode being both remote and on campus. I think that we will have to think very carefully about how we teach. So normally we just assume that this, this experience in terms of cohort building just happens naturally in things like seminar groups. Now I think we're going to have to structure the education to facilitate that cohort building much more than we have had to think about previously. So it's really heartening to hear all of the wonderful things that are, are being done remotely, can be done remotely, and can be done in a socially distanced manner. But there must be a few things where it's simply impossible to do, to do them remotely. I think you are right. Obviously, there are some lab-based lab -based, um, experiences which require technical equipment that people just cannot have in the homes, be that for kind of safety issues or just the expense, for example. And in those cases, we're having to look at our timetables very carefully and move those activities to later in the year or to more flexible um, situations when we will be able to run them with all of our students back on campus. I think that it's really important that we make sure that we meet all of the kind of requirements and the learning outcomes of our degrees and, and particularly with regard to things like accreditation. So, so some of the activity will have to be flexed to be at a different part of the year than was originally intended but our intention is certainly to still deliver those aspects of our degree programs clearly our plan is to offer a, a, quite a substantial range of, of on-campus activities where students and staff will be present and obviously in the same space how are we going to make sure that we abide with social distancing and everyone is safe and well? I think that that's really important. I think that obviously the kind of safety of the both the staff and the students has to be our highest priority. We're just about to embark on ramping up our research if that hasn't already started. And I think that we're going to gain some really valuable experience as we ramp up our research. We'll be having PhD students and lab based work ramping up over the next couple of months. I think that we can learn quite a lot about how we actually implement safe distancing within a lab based setting during that period to make sure that when our students do come back onto campus, we have a really good idea about how to do that and keep our students safe. Certainly the campus is going to have to go through some redesign in terms of introducing potentially one way systems. I think that um, all of that work is happening as as we speak. There's a lot of um, thought going into how we make the campus a safe a safe place to to return to in in the autumn term. Yeah, and in fact, I've been part of, and as indeed you have, of some of the planning of that. And there's an incredible level of detail, and and people working very very hard to ensure that you know, we will be we will be safe, and we are taking this very seriously. 
quite naturally we think of lockdown in quite a negative sense it has removed our it's removed our liberty you know we've had to stay in our homes we've had to perhaps travel remotely and in fact we've had to put up with in some states some cases loss you know and severe disruption um so in some ways it's quite a difficult difficult question what i'm about to say which is has something positive come out of lockdown are there any positives that have that have emerged from this i i think that's a good question and i agree with you that um i've had moments where it's just where it's worked in a cre- incredibly well and there's been moments where i've thought oh i really just want to be back at work where i can actually move from one office to another office for a meeting or go and grab a cup of coffee with someone but I do think that this is this is going to fundamentally change the way that we work because we've discovered that we can work very effectively when we work remotely. And I think that, again, this is a this this could be seen in a really positive way because a lot of us have really long commutes into work. Imagine if we're we're able to say to our staff, you can work from home two or three days a week. You don't necessarily have to be on campus every single day. Think about our estate, the use of our space. If we don't have people coming into the office every day, we can free up more space for our students to be able to interact. Whilst it's been really difficult, I think it's been very difficult for a lot of our students. I think that they have been just incredible in terms of um, of how they have worked. And and again, as you've already said, how our staff have worked. And I think that this this is really inspirational and also gives me great hope that for next academic year, we will have an offering that I think is still as exciting as our offering has always been, if not more so. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's, yeah, we're absolutely committed to having a quality, you know, educational experience which delivers the outcomes that we say it should, and it will.